Bobby came down that road like he had a horse fly under his hat. <laughs> Come on, boy. Well, when that young fellow doesn't want to stop and talk horses, it must be something serious. It is. There's only one thing that would make him run Trigger Jr. like that. Presenting your favorite songsters of the range, Roy Rogers and the Sons of the Pioneers. Riding down the canyon to watch the sun go down. A picture that no artist there could paint. Ooh. White faced cattle on the mountainside. I hear a coyote whining for its mate. Cactus plants are blooming. There you are, Miss Blake. Just present that when you deliver the horses tomorrow and you'll get your money. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Well, thanks to me. That's a fine bunch of horses in there. You can give Bobby the credit for that. He picked them out and did most of the catching and gentled every one of them. Sometimes I think Bobby and wild horses speak the same language. Don't you believe it, Butler. They're both remarkable kids. Over at the reservation, we know what it is to get those wild critters out of the hills. Any of them, let alone taking your pick. Well, that's all the Blakes have ever known, is horses. Now I suppose you'll go out and catch some more. That's right. This represents two years of pretty hard work. But Bobby will tell you we're going to catch every wild horse in the West. Guess what? Roy Rogers coming out to sing at Larry Lot. Well, hooray for Roy Rogers. But I've got better news than that. Mr. Butler's buying all our horses. All our horses? <laughs> well, naturally not Trigger Junior, silly. Well, how did I know? You leave a woman alone in a horse deal for a minute, and no telling what she's liable to sell. Mm. How much you get? Twelve hundred dollars. Not bad, eh, Bobby? Well, it's a fair deal. You pay for the feed between now and time for delivery. Well, now, that seems reasonable. Guess we'd better be getting along before this horse trader gets our saddles out from under us. <laughs> so long, Alice. Come over to the ranch and see us. We will, Bert. He doesn't mean we. Oh, jealous, eh? You know, Bobby, I have a feeling you're not very fond of me. It's a good horse you got. Goodbye, Bert. Bye. Bobby, you were rude to Bert. Well, I don't like him. And horses don't like him, neither. Don't you want me any different than a horse? <laughs> Never mind. I don't like him so much. And right now, I'm too happy about this to think of anything else. Think what it means. Yeah. At last, we got a stake. We can fix up the house and the barn for Trigger Jr. And a radio station for Roy Rogers to come to. You said it. I could buy a radio station if I could only catch those rustlers and get that $10,000 government reward. Oh, you and your rustlers. I know. Why don't you write him a letter and tell him you need the money and won't they please come over and give themselves up? <laughs>
Try to stop quicker, only this can Bronx mighty contrary. All right, going uphill, but going down, I just give her a pull in the prayer. <laughs> Up in. Rustler's team here, did he? Sonny, it's a good thing we met up. You know, folks call me the professional rustler catcher. They do? Sure. I'm the fella that made the sagebrush safe for steers. But these are horse thieves. Oh, them coyotes, shucks. When horse thieves hear I'm coming, they march right up with a rope around their neck. Even help me pick out the tree. It's awful nice of you to offer to help, but I still think this is a job for Roy Rogers and the Pioneers. So your mind's made up, is it? Yeah. Well, if they don't catch them rustlers right soon and you want a professional, just let me know. That's them, the rustlers. And not a sheriff in sight. But you're a professional rustler, can't you? I know, but... up a ways back. We better get some water. Well, there's a creek down the road a piece. I wish I'd cultivated my voice. Wouldn't sound so hot coming through that filter. <laughs> Say, where did you learn to make coffee? Never did learn. It's a gift. My own blend, too. You ought to call it boots and saddles. Oh, you needn't blame the coffee. I'll bet all your vittles turn to vinegar when they see what's going to gargle them. Huh. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> feel better now, Bobby? Yeah, I feel all right now. I got a horse named Trigger Jr. You have? Yeah, I mean, I did have. Oh, well, rustlers took him with our other horses. Yeah, Gabby told me something about that. He did? And he must have told you why I came after you. We better get started before the rustlers get too far away. Well, not so fast, Bobby. I'm afraid it isn't quite as easy as you think. What do you mean? Those rustlers won't be nothing for you and your boys to handle. Well, thanks for the compliment, Bobby, but... Uh... But what? <laughs> you see, we have radio dates that keep us pretty busy. Think how you'd feel if somebody stole Trigger. Well, Bobby, I'd really like to help you. Maybe we could take you home. Oh, I can get a home all right. But I'm not going till I get our horses back. Well, look, uh, we have to be getting to Larry at Lodge. How about you coming along till I kind of think things over? Gee, that'd be swell. When Sis says she'll think things over, she means she's going to change her mind. 
Can Gabby go along? He's a professional rustler catcher. Sure, Gabby will go too, won't you, Gabby? Sure. Trigger! Here, boy. How would you like to ride him, Bobby? Me? Gosh! Well, come on. Well, what are you gonna do, walk? I figured on riding your horse, Pat. Well, what am I gonna take, a streetcar? Well, you can ride with Gabby. In that rolling junk pile, I'll sing off key for six months. <laughs> oh. Roy, I feel as sorry for this kid as you do, but don't you think we're kind of letting ourselves in for something, taking him along with us? Well, I just want to make sure he gets home safe. Maybe some of the folks at Lariat Lodge will know his folks. Get out of my way. Get out of whose way? My way. Oh, what are you talking about, you old whiskered goat? Civil war. We better do something about that. What? Oh, no, oh, you oh. Don't. Wait a minute. One more smart alecky remark out of that cowboy comic, and I'll park his tope with that wrench. What? Now, wait a minute, Gabby. You and Pat's got to get along in this outfit. You've got to make allowance for his affliction. Why the affliction? Well, he's deaf as a post. Of course, he can read our lips, but he don't know you well enough. No. Poor feller. Why didn't somebody tell me? Yeah, the kid told us. Poor old guy, he can't hear a thing. He's sensitive about it, too. Gee, I wish I'd have known. Oh, <laughs> get in, Brady. I say, get in, Brady. I hope I didn't appear quarrelsome. Oh, that's all right. I say, that's all right. I guess I was trying to be a little too comical myself. Let's call it quit. Sure, put her there. No! I don't mind you holding my hand, but doggone you, you don't have to mangle it. There he goes, starting it again. Are you to treat my heart like me? Why should I be still and let this thrill pass me by? I must have you. But who am I? Very pretty, Miss Joyce. <laughs> Mr. Fellows, it's nice to see you again. I was just doing a little rehearsing. Well, it sounded good. You know my foreman, Bert Worcester? Of course. Glad to see you again, Mr. Worcester. Hello. What is this, a holiday on the fellow's ranch? No, it's anything but a holiday. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd come over for dinner and to see the new show. Roy Rogers and the Pioneers are broadcasting from here this evening. Sorry. But well, speaking of Roy Rogers, reminds me. One of his admirers is wandering around the countryside and his sister thought he might head this way. His name is Bobby Blake, a nine-year-old. And if he turns up, will you tell him that his sister's at our ranch? Gladly. Thanks. Is Mr. Jordan in? I think so. Just a moment, I'll see. Gus, a couple of gentlemen to see you. Why, hello, Mr. Fellows. Glad to see you. Thanks. Hi, Ooster. You haven't been over here for quite a while. Been pretty busy. Good, good. Sit down, gentlemen. Make yourselves comfortable, will you? you smoke? Have a cigar? Not for me. Ooster? Thank you. Well, I hope things are going better with your horses over at the reservation. No, as a matter of fact, they're getting worse. Not more rustlers. Plenty more. They ran a herd off the far side yesterday in broad daylight. Well, no wonder you're upset. Of course, I don't see how the government can hold you responsible Inasmuch as you only give you a handful of men to cover hundreds of square miles. I'm not worried about the responsibility or my job. I'm just afraid that they'll close up the project and it's too important to be abandoned. Well, do you think there's something I could do to help you? Yes. What's really beating us is the way these fellows find the herd, no matter where we move them. I guess the ways of rustlers are a little out of my line. I'm afraid I couldn't help you solve that one. <laughs> I don't expect you to. What I want you to do is to have your boys keep their eyes open for any suspicious-looking outfits. Mm -hmm. I'm asking all the ranchers up at this end of the valley to do the same. I'll be very glad to do that for you. Thanks. I'll be on my way then. Good. Stop in again. Well? Fellows is having us move 50 head over to the east side. And tell your boys to cut out the rough stuff. Now, yesterday they... Save your complaints for some other time. Coming, Bert? Coming. But I still got a few complaints to make. Hope your driving's better. 
anywhere near coffee. You want to drive? Hey, hey, no, no, put it back, put it back. Run just as well that way. He never pays any attention to the direction I wanted to go in hell. I say there ain't nothing to worry about. Put it back, you lunatic. Put it back. <laughs> Dragon he is, has got me down. He can do everything better than anybody, from catching rustlers to riding rodeos. And now he's given out, he's got cups for dancing. Oh, well, maybe he has. Listen, if that four-flusher can dance, I'll eat my hat. But eat it. <laughs> you wanted to see Gabby. Come take a look. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you 15 minutes of song and music by remote control from Larry at Lodge. Our guests this evening are those popular cowboy singers, Roy Rogers and the Sons of the Pioneers. We'll open the program with Blue Prairie. I'm sure you've taken the charm of our Arizona nights right into the homes of our listeners out here and your fans in the East. East. East Road. You get out the trucks and I'll round up the boys. I hate to 
shelf like this seems like bad manners, but I'll feel much better once I get that youngster home. I don't know how I'm ever going to talk him out of insisting that I personally catch his rustlers. <laughs> You'll forget all about that by the time you get into the fellow's ranch. Boys today have such vivid imaginations. Today it's rustlers, tomorrow it's train rustlers. If I thought there were any rustlers around here, I'd bring them in to pep up the floor show. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Well, goodbye, Mr. Jordan. Goodbye, Miss Joyce. Bye, goodbye, Rogers. Goodbye, Rogers. Be I, my little buckaroo. Ooh. Get him, get him, Roy, the rustlers. Take it easy, son. You're having a nightmare. There's no rustlers around here. You're dreaming. So you think he's dreaming, eh? Listen. Yeah, listen and look. Bobby, you better stay here where we can find you when we come back. But I don't want to go. You too, double freight. Hey, what are you doing? I said you stay here. There's liable to be trouble. You stay right there, Bobby. Why, you lily liver knobby neat young squirt, troubles my middle name. Of course, there's going to be shooting. I don't mind dropping my middle name. Hey, where are you going? I won't get into any trouble. like a posse to me. I'm gonna make a run for it. Try to keep as many as you can. What do you mean? We'll keep them all. You boys go on after the horses. I'll go after them. Unless you expect some back. You all right, Roy? Yeah, you better go pull the other boys back. These fellas know this country and we don't. Okay. Roy! Roy, did you catch him? We got one of them. Well, what are you doing here, Mr. Rooster? Well, hello, Bobby. You mean you're with these fellas? Sure, this is Roy Rogers. He's gonna round up these rustlers for us. Maybe. Well, it looks as if we're all trying to do the same thing out here tonight. Trying to catch ourselves a rustler. I took you for a rustler and I, I guess you took me for one too, eh, Rogers? I took you for one, all right. We better go see if we can round up Gabby, and we'll get that hand taken care of right. Come on, Bobby. Come on, boys. Hey! Where in tarnation you fellers been? How'd you get up here? A run! Didn't you see me when I passed you and that crow bait? All right, Gabby, get aboard and let's go. Hmm, I see you catch one of them. No, Gabby, this is Mr. Wooster. He's a foreman of the fellas' ranch. Roy mistook him for a rustler. Well, that's a natural mistake on a night like this. Now then, if you live around here, maybe you can tell me. Is there a reward for catching a rustler? Well, now, I believe there is. You better wait until we catch him first, then it'll be share and share alike. If I'd know that, I'd have saved my energy. Well, there's your rustler. Divide him up. Why, the stingy old maverick wanted the reward money all to himself. How'd you catch him, Gabby? I told you I was a professional rustler catcher. And the way I catched him is a professional secret. Oh, he's crazy. My horse fell with me and knocked me out. You and your big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awfully sorry you've been put to so much trouble, Mr. Rogers. But I can't tell you how much I appreciate your riding hurt on that young brother of mine. Well, it was no trouble at all, Miss Blake. In the first place, I owe something to my number one fan. And in the second place, he said he had a sister who's worth riding miles to see. 
Ain't she as pretty as I said she was, Roy? Bobby, you promised me you'd go to sleep. Okay, good night, Roy. Good night, Bobby, and you're a good judge of horses and beauty. Oh, uh, that sleep advice sounds like a good idea for you, too. That's right. And, Mr. Rogers, there's lots of room down the bunkhouse for you and the boys. We'd be glad to have you stay with us as long as you like. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Fellows, but there's the little matter of delivering Gabby's rustler to the sheriff before we turn in. Oh, about that, Rogers. The boss thinks I ought to ride into town tonight and have the doctor fix up this hand of mine. I might as well take the rustler down to the jail at the same time. Save you a trip. Gee, Roy, he might get away. Bobby, go to sleep. Well, I think that's a good idea. The boys will be glad to know they can turn in. Good, then I might as well get going. Good night, Alice. Good night. See you in the morning, boss. Good night. Good night, Miss Blake. Good night. Good night, Mr. Rogers. Good night. All right, mister, we're going to take a ride into town. You mean you're going to let him take my wrestler in alone? The guy's only got one hand. Well, he'll be all right. We're going to get some sleep. Good luck, Wooster. Thanks a lot. Come on, mister. And now, Mr. Rogers, can we get about our business? Pretty soon. Oh, look, Roy, we've gone 20 miles out of our way. We've put our little hero in the arms of his sister. We've caught the kid a rustler, and the sheriff will make him talk. The sheriff will make him talk if our friend delivers him. Where are you going? What's the idea, Roy? I'm going to take a little ride alone. I ever saw this is one. Oh, we knew it was you all the time. Certainly. Isn't there any place a fellow can go without being followed? But, Roy, we wasn't going to interfere. We know you was following Wooster and that rustler. I figured it wouldn't do any harm to sort of hang around in case of trouble. That's right, Roy. If there's anything a crook likes when he's being checked up on is a big audience. They're probably so far ahead now we'll never catch up with them. like we've lost them, boys. If they'd been on this trail, we'd have caught them before this. We can ride on into town and see if Wooster delivered him to the sheriff. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, gosh, all oh, fish hooks, Roy. I'm sorry if these fellas upset your plans. I tried my best to talk them out of following you. Why, you bewhiskered old behemoth. You're the one that insisted on tagging along to keep an eye on your share of the reward. Roy, look up there on the ridge. That's the two of them, all right. But that ain't the way to town. You're right. There's nothing in that direction except Lariat Lodge. Boys, looks like we're going to play a return engagement sooner than we thought. I don't want trouble any more than you do, especially as we're nearly done with this job. This is a bad time to lose your head, Worcester. I'm not losing my head, but when I told you I'd help you with the job, I didn't figure on any rough stuff like stealing those kids' horses and then this. I've had enough. Do you think Rogers and Fellows believed your story? Would they let me take Pete into town if they hadn't? Don't look at me. The only way I can get those amateur hillbillies to go to bed is to serve a round of Mickey Finn's on the house. Well, tell the band to stop playing for the night, and then the guests will have to go to bed. They'll more likely build a bonfire on the dance floor and yodel home on the range. Hello. This is rather a surprise, but a pleasant one. Well, thanks. We didn't get very far. In fact, we're stopping at the fellow's ranch. I came to see Jordan's. Oh, well, that's too bad. He isn't in at the moment. I'll wait. Well, that's fine. You're just in time to sing a goodnight song for a guest. Hold it, folks. See what you can find out. It's Mr. Rogers. Let's get him to sing a goodnight lullaby. Yeah! What do you suppose he's doing back here? I don't know. But I know you were crazy to come back here. In a little Spanish town was on a night like this. Stars were peekabooing down was on a night like this. I whispered, be true to me. And she sighed, she, she, 
many skies have turned to gray because we're far apart. Many moons have passed away and still she's in my heart. We made a promise and sealed it with a kiss. In a little Spanish town was on a night like this. You're in this as deep as we are, Worcester. You're scarcely in a position to quit. All the same, I'm quitting. This is the last order I'm taking from you, Jordan. How far do you want me to go with Pete? You better stay with him until you get back on the road to town. Well, what do you want? Why, uh, I was sort of looking for some place to wash my hands. Kitchen sink don't seem to be in here, does it? <laughs> Must have come in the wrong door. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Did he see anything? I don't know. They was in there, all right. I saw him sneak out the back door. Good work. Come on. They're about a quarter of a mile ahead. Yeah, you can see them every once in a while. We better move up a little closer. I know what I want to know about Wooster. If we wait, we're liable to lose his playmate. Well, I think we've gone far enough. You better go back to the shack. In just a minute, Wooster. I've got to have a gun. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you in a few days. So long. So long. You can tell her yourself when we get you back to the ranch and call a doctor. No, I'm all through. I stopped too much lead this time. What's this all about? You've got to tell me. I, I can't make it. You get him, Rogers. Get him. Blue Prairie. Radio. East. West. South. South. No chance to catch him out here tonight. He just dropped right out of sight. How's Wooster? He's dead. That was Blue Prairie, folks. Played for the many who've requested it. And particularly for those lonely cowboys who tonight sit watching the moon in the east and smoking a last cigarette before turning in. Is that what you wanted, Roy? You bet it is, Bobby. It was a good day for us and a bad day for the rustlers when you rigged up that gadget and started recording the programs at Lariat Lodge. But I don't get it. What's that got to do with catching rustlers? Everything, I think. Tell me this, did anything happen on the night that you made that record? Let's see. Uh... Gee, I see what you mean. The rustlers ran off nearly a hundred head of government horses that night. And from the East Range, too, I'll bet. Well, I don't know about that. All right, boys, we better go take a look. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying here with me. Well, I'll be a red-headed raccoon. No wonder I couldn't catch him on foot. Those tracks are the answer to a lot of things, Gabby. They've been carting them away in trucks. What are you going to do about it, Roy? Follow the tracks? No, I think we'll sit around and listen to the radio a few evenings. We might find some fresh ones. Hello, crooner. 
Chad Philly from the lodge. You boys better ride on. I'll see you later. Well, Mr. Rogers, don't tell me we're playing outdoor engagements now. <laughs> no, I'm just out for a little ride. Then how about taking it in my direction, back to the lodge? Well, I'd like that, but I promised I'd be at the fellow's ranch for dinner. Thanks, just the same. You're not still playing Catch the Rustlers with that little Blake boy. Well, I've tried to quit the game several times, but the rustlers themselves keep dealing me in. They leave pretty open trails sometimes. I don't know anything about rustling or following trails, but it seems as though singing would be a lot more pleasant occupation and far safer. Wasn't that dreadful about poor Mr. Wooster? Yes, it was, but of course he was making a trail, not following one. Yes. Yes, I suppose so. Well, goodbye, Mr. Rogers. Goodbye. They were probably just out for a ride. In my opinion, Rogers doesn't just go out riding. He was looking for something and probably found it. All right, suppose the tire tracks did mean something to him. How could he possibly tie them up with our boys in the radio broadcasts? Maybe Worcester wasn't as dead when Rogers found him as when you identified him in the coroner's office. Yeah, that's possible. You know, uh, if I didn't know you better, Barbara, I'd say you were acting like a woman scorned. Listen, darling. I'm acting like a woman who doesn't want any tumbleweed tender throwing a monkey wrench into our plans. Then we'd better throw first. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Blue Prairie was a requested number, dedicated especially to the men of the West. That's it, boys. Come on. Oh, gee, Roy, can't I go with you? But your sister's got your pants, and what good's a cowboy without pants? That's Pat, over there. Well, we didn't miss this time. Pat, you and Bob go around the other side, and when you get there, whistle. The rest of you fan out, and we'll all close in together. Gabby, this ought to be a real night for a professional wrestler, catcher. Well, I don't know. They might be laying for us tonight. I feel more like a professional gopher. Gopher? Yeah, go for the sheriff. Good, huh? <laughs> seem to be anybody at home. They couldn't have got away. Maybe they're hiding in the truck. I'll have Brady look. Hey, wait a minute. All right, come out of there with your hands up. You make pretty good targets from here. You boys make pretty good targets yourself. Drop your guns and put up your hands. You're all under arrest. Arrest? What for? Why, you... You don't think we're the rustlers, do you? Well, what else could I think? Those are your trucks, aren't they? Well, certainly not. We never saw them before. Well, you'll have to prove that. Drop those guns. Looks like we've corralled and branded ourselves, boys. Thanks, Mr. Jordan, for your tip. Glad to be of service. Rogers, aren't you surprised to see me here? Not especially. Well, how do you like the picture of our singing friends now? Framed in the wrought iron bars of our county jail, they look lovely. But what does that do to your little project? It'll simplify it. With Rogers locked up and Worcester prematurely retired, who's going to worry about rustlers or notice if a few more horses disappear? Ha <laughs> ha. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Lariat Lodge takes pleasure in presenting a program of dance music, first of which is a request number, Blue Prairie. Dedicated to the men of the West. That's it. Where's the 
sheriff. The wrestlers are riding tonight. They are? Are you the sheriff? No, I ain't the sheriff. I don't know where he is. Except he's out of town. Are you the rustler? No. Well, I didn't reckon you was. I got the rustlers all tucked away for the night. Oh, well, they ain't no more rustlers than you are. The real rustlers are working tonight. Don't you know where the sheriff is? Ain't the slightest idea. Now, you sit down, son, and take it easy. You can watch me practice my music lesson. That is, if you want to. Well, if I can't see the sheriff, can I see Roy and the fellas? Oh, I guess that's all right. They don't mind. Right through that door. Hey, I mean, got any guns on you? No. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it, Bobby, until the sheriff gets back. But then it'll be too late. Maybe this will be the last chance for me to get Trigger back and get the reward. We got to do something now, Roy. Well, you can see we're sort of handicapped here, but I'll tell you what you do. You go on home and I'll tell the sheriff about it when he gets back. Oh, he won't listen to you. He thinks you're one of the rustlers. I've got to do something about this myself. And fast. Well, wait a minute, Bobby. You can't do that. You're going to get in trouble, son. I wish they'd hurry up with those horses. Yeah, those truckers will be driving all night as it is. We better go over and get them ready. Have the boys got plenty of gas? As far as I know. Don't you know? Why don't you ask Jake? He's handling the trucks. Get that truck ready. You're worried about that kid, Roy. No more than I am. If them rustlers do anything to him, I'll skin them alive and render their hides for rattlesnake oil. Uh, there must be some way we can knock a hole in this one-horse plank. Yeah, and there must be some way we can stop that jailer out there from banging away on that wood carving set. Hey, you! How long are you going to keep this racket up? What's the matter with you fellas? Don't you like music? No. Why, Gabby, I'm ashamed of you. And after you telling me you conducted the Philharmonic. Huh? Oh, I think it's fine. These boys just expect too much. They're all professional salt players. Yeah. Prof you mean that they could do better on it than I was doing? That's right. Golly. If there's anything I love, it's saw music. Certainly would appreciate hearing a professional play it. <laughs> boys would be glad to. Uh, 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 ain't a real saw. Mm -mm, wouldn't cut nothing. I got it from a mail order place that specializes in musical saws. It's a beauty. Okay, well, that's fine. Then nobody will get hurt. Well. Here, Pat. Get him Curly Joe. All right. <laughs> Me tell you a tale of a gambling man, the roughest and toughest of all. He was old Curly Joe from Idaho. He was rough and rugged and tall. He was over six feet and as slim as a rail, and his eyes were as black as the night. 
And when he cut loose, that ornery Cayuse would always end up in a fight. Whoa! Curly Joe from Idaho, a ramble and gamble and rover. He down from the bottom, he down from the top, but now his dealing is over. One night in the game, he picked up the cards and rip, they fell in their places. And then from the middle, the bottom and top, he dealt off those four fatal aces. Now he knew at a glance, he was a bet in his pants, so the dough he laid on the line. He said, if you please, I'll just play these. I think this hand's mighty fine. Now they made their bets and they spread their cards upon the table of green. Then old Curly Joe raked over the dough, four aces were over for queens. Then a shot rang out in old Boot Hill Saloon. Poor Curly fell to the floor. He whispered inside, somebody has lied. Four aces don't win anymore. Curly Joe from Idaho, a ramble and gamble and rover. He dealt from the bottom, he dealt from the top. But now his dealing is over. What's he doing here? I don't know. He's just naturally nosy. We're going to give him a ride on that. That'll look like a reasonable accident, I guess. All right, let's get going. Herd's on the way. Jump in jigger. It's the sheriff. Keep me honest foreman, have you? Of course not, Gabby. No. 
Nobody's going to look up into your face and get any mushy ideas. That's right. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm sure glad you're here, Bobby. I've got to say goodbye, but I'll be back soon. As soon as there's a moon in June. I heard you singing to Alice about it. Uh, you didn't either. Here you are, Brady! I brought you a going away present. Oh, that wasn't necessary. Ah, uh, you're a nice sort of a fella. You know, you and me ought to be friends. Well, what is it? I'll show you. How's that? Ah! What are you trying to do? Make me go damp? You're the one that needs it. I need it. Roy told me you was deep. And Nolan told me that you were. Why, you... Oh! Ah! Of all the doggone, unreal, old down tricks. <laughs>